we have got a set of really rich sources of data. We're building up very rich and detailed digital footprints of students as they move through institutions, as they move through their particular curricula towards their qualifications. But these sources are of relatively little use to us unless we can combine them in ways to answer meaningful questions. So again, the purpose of learning analytics is not just to collect digital data for its own sake. It's to address very particular questions which are of pressing concern in the educational process. So let me give a couple of examples. Um, a lot of attention has been given by universities across Britain and in other parts of the world to how uh, we can identify students at risk. Uh, these are basically early warning systems that tell us that a student is at risk of discontinuing their program uh, for any particular reason. And a lot of these uh, applications have been very successful. Universities that have used them for the first time have found that they have been able to help students come back in at critical points, particularly in their first year of study, and have in fact saved their uh, investment in their learning and those students have gone through uh, to be successful. Now those early warning systems are a classic example of combining different sources of information to a defined and achievable purpose. So an early warning system will combine, for example, the information that is derived from swipe cards from the security department across the university with information from the library, for example, and maybe other sources of information as well, to give an alert that a student has not been present at that university, either physically or in the virtual space, for a defined period of time. A warning then goes to a tutor a tutor makes an intervention, talks to the student, and hopefully the student comes back into study. But what we can see happening here is that no one source by itself is adequate. So the early warning system is the intelligent combination um, of sources to get a desired outcome. And what we're seeing as learning analytics matures as a field is those questions are becoming more and more sophisticated. So the sorts of questions that are being asked around adaptive learning, for example, is how can similar source of source of information be combined in real time so that we can anticipate what a student's emerging and future learning needs might be? In every case, the thing that comes first is the intelligent question. That then defines the logical combination of the sources of digital data in order to address that question. Because learning analytics is about asking purposeful questions across complex sets of data, we need to make sure that we have what is called interoperability. Interoperability is the ability to bring together very diverse sources of information to answer common questions. Now, in practice, in everyday terms, interoperability is all about standards. And standards enable the data sets that are collected from different devices or different sources to be used together in conjunction. So for example, if one university uh, starts off for its VLE by using Moodle and then decides that it wants to change that VLE platform to let's say Canvas, if there aren't standards, there can't be interoperability. If there aren't standards uh, between Moodle and Canvas, then that transition could mean that that institution lost all of its historic data because it couldn't read it anymore. It couldn't interpret it anymore. So standards are the mechanics that allow interoperability to happen. And they're more and more important the more we have diverse sources of information out there. So when we're collecting information, for example, as we are increasingly from smartphones, we need to be sure that we have the standards in place that the databases that sit behind your smartphone, which record all of your digital data on your smartphone, are of a form that can speak to databases that might be collected off the VLE. Common standards are what holds this together. Just to use a historical example, uh, for example, anybody who has uh, data that is recorded on a floppy disk can no longer use that information because we don't have interoperability between very early floppy disks and contemporary forms of storage. 
there we've got an example of a broken line of historic data that means we've lost information. So the more we build up these rich trends of historic data that allow us to interpret and anticipate the future, the more we get a diversity of digital devices out there, the more important interoperability becomes and the more important the standards behind interoperability become to make sure that we have a continuity of information that allows our interpretations to get richer and richer. And the one standard that we use across JISC is XAPI, which is the common standard that we apply to ensure that interoperability is possible. The more learning analytics rolls out, the more information we have. We're collecting terabyte after terabyte of student information. The primary source of that information, of course, is held by colleges <coughs> and by universities. They own it, they're responsible for it, they're responsible for its protection in terms of the law, they're responsible to their own students, and that never changes in learning analytics. But if we are to use that information for more and more effective comparisons to the benefit of our institutions, to the benefit of our students, we also need to mirror that information in ways that make it available uh, for us to do that sort of analysis. And we do that by putting all of that information in what we call a learning records warehouse. The learning records warehouse provides us with the opportunity to develop secondary analysis of that data in really meaningful ways. It also allows institutions to be absolutely sure that their information is safe and secure held by a trusted third party in a completely secure and confidential environment. Data is the new gold. We never want to lose it.